This is literally what your job is. That's what you're supposed to do. You're here arguing about this shit on the internet. If you have somebody right here that's willing to engage you in the concept and, and you have the opportunity to, to educate them or to talk to them or to, or to sway their opinion at all, why would you not take advantage of that? You literally asked her the question. You asked her, do you think, like, were you just looking for one answer? Like, what is the dialogue tree there? Do you think trans youth should be able to transition? Yes, cool, we agree. No, oh, well, not my job to educate you. Like, why even ask the fucking question? Um, or you could just- I love the little implicit threats. I wish I would have watched this part. Talk to her. Hello. I wonder what this. Salutations, everybody. Salutations. Hello. I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, I'm sure many of you. I, I've, I've had so much uh, uh, engagement from people that you know wanted to see this happen. So I'm pretty confident, considering the uh, interactions we had. I guess that's about a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, that everybody knows who I am. So mm -hmm. yes. You know, yes. we don't have to. Uh, I don't want to be weird and objectifying, but it's crazy. Mate, Kidology has suggested that only 40% of men would be interested in her conservatively. She's probably in the top 20% of attractive people. Yeah, I, I don't know where I'm at sometimes, but then people in my subreddit too are also posting like, oh no, like, I, here's like an issue that I run into sometimes. When I evaluate things, I try to evaluate like every individual thing like as its own thing. That's what I try to do. I mean, I'm probably not perfect, but I try to do that. Sometimes, so like if I have like a particular belief and you ask me, usually it's going to believe like, it's like, oh, I believe this thing for this reason or whatever. I feel like sometimes people get beliefs as part of a package deal of other beliefs and then, but they haven't actually like thought through the individual thing at all. So, yeah. do, will that train kill my people if I'm standing on the tracks? I have no idea. There was some issue that came up yesterday where a lot of chat was in disagreement. I'm like, do people really think this? Or is this like part of like, uh, you have to believe this thing? Does anybody remember what it was? I, I said what it was. Did it have to do with a man being willing to fuck a random woman? Or did it have to do with... um? Oh yeah, the masturbating replacing sex. I don't think that happens. Like... If you have the opportunity to go out and meet a girl, I don't think you're ever like, okay, I could meet the girl, but I thank God I just have masturbation instead. But I think that that like masturbation replaces sex, I think is part of like the red pill and Jordan Peterson idea of like porn is destroying the modern man. So people are like, okay, yeah, masturbation must be replacing sex because like that's part of that belief system. Like if I don't believe that, then maybe porn isn't bad and maybe the modern man isn't being destroyed and maybe there's something, right? Like it's like part of the bind of that belief system. Um, I mean, I could also just be wrong, but I just, I don't know about, I don't have any first-hand experience or second-hand. Like, I don't have any friends. I've never felt that way. Um, even when I wasn't, like, it's not like I was the ultra Riz in, like, college. But I never felt like, oh, like, there's a girl I could talk to, but I don't want to um, because I can just masturbate to porn instead. Um, I, I feel like it's more like some guys are shy and they don't go out or do anything or whatever, which is fine. And then they might also just stay home and masturbate. But it's not like you're choosing, like, porn over somebody else, right? Like, I would never choose League of Legends over a girl. But I might be lazy and I don't go out and I just stay home and play League of Legends instead. Like... I don't know. Masturbation does help with keeping sex drive down. No, does it? Oh. Did somebody just get ran? I still can't tell. Like, I mean, like, it might keep you not horny for, like, a few hours or something. But, like, do you really, like, masturbate? It's like, okay, thank God I masturbated. Like, I can focus on not women now or something. Or like, again, I, I mean, I'm sure you're not gonna like masturbate and then like be horny immediately after or something, but like, is that really like a long term? I don't know. I'm sure you have lots of questions for me. Um, just, just fair warning. Uh -oh. yeah. Just fair warning. Uh, I have two little ones that may run down any point in time. I think my wife just walked in and she knows me this but I just want to make sure if ever like I seem like I'm disengaged or I cut my screen because I'm I you know if, if ever that just know it's not running off the the stream it's just no, kind of no worries at all no worries at all just um, the core. just just let me sort of uh be a part of your melting pot of things if you need to leave for anything feel free no hard feelings um yeah yeah completely understand definitely um but anyway, I'm sure you have a lot of questions for me. Uh, I definitely have questions about things. Um, I'm perfectly happy for you to start with the question, um, unless you want me to. Hey, <coughs> um, I don't want to start with a question. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I first want to start with an apology. 
Oh, um, oh. it's something I I did at the end of the the critique video. Um, but I I don't think I know that not everybody uh, caught it um, because that's just the nature of, of how we watch uh, content. Most people watch content for the thing they're looking for most, and thus get out of it what they are looking for. Um, but, uh, I um, was well aware during and in the aftermath, uh, like genuinely considered. I think I'm just going to fall Hello? this uh, the video. That is just not fun to be the subject of discourse, even if that discourse is important, which I think the discourse was in the, the video that we did. Um, even if there were important things that um, need to be hashed out from that or may have been learned or uh, even if there was kind Oh my God, he's one of those talkers that talks I, forever I and says it, it, nothing. It's never fun to like scroll through your feed and see your face, but not your videos, if that makes sense. Um, it's yes. something that's happened a lot to me. Um, and, you know, I said in the, in the thing that this was not kind. This is not nice. We're going to try to be nice, but con no, this is not going to be nice. But we're going to try to be kind. Um, but there's no way to not recognize that there's a harm done when content is made about an individual that is not theirs. And they're, they're not there to represent themselves. And that becomes discourse, you then lose yourself in the entirety of the process. Um, and so I know that wasn't a fun thing to experience, although I also know that that's just kind of part of our job. But being in front of you, I want to make sure that I was clear about that, that, you know, while I, I do think our video was important, um, and I, I don't think, uh, I don't take back, I wouldn't take back much of what came out of the video. I haven't watched it in a while. So, you know, surely some things in my perspective may have changed. But I'm I locked in. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We had the most righteous, you know, breakdown of the ideas. And we went we right on every stage. We had all the logic and data. It do that doesn't matter in the face of a person was, you know, pilloried uh, via a YouTube. Oh board. my God! And that's just never fun. You know. Yes. Well, I think just in relation to that, I think I'd like to just ask, um, why didn't you talk to me? about it why didn't you uh talk to me beforehand because um you reached out to me a year ago uh to talk to you and then i didn't hear from you at all and then the next time i heard from you you made a video with your hope you play the outer wild someday uh, best space something. game ever made and oh for sure dude. it was also quite unique in that you're playing hardest uh, difficulty you Duh. haven't before uploaded a whole stream that you've done on your patreon onto your b-side channel uh, why this video? Why was this the moment? Why didn't you? Uh, why didn't you talk to me? Um, because I, I was very confused by that. I was very confused by the, I think the sort of uh, indirectness of this entire situation. What the uh, fuck is the the idea that? Uh, you oh, I need more population. Me on your channel that uh, you don't. I, I just I'm guessing the feeling even from our email interactions that you don't want to talk to me uh, that this is more of an inconvenience or just something that has to be done because of sort of the consequence of you making that reaction video then you actually wanting to talk to me as you would to Bellamy or Professor Flowers or Kadisha or whomever so I just uh, well just wondering about that so there's, there's various, you know, I feel like that was multiple questions in a way because there's various explanations as to why we haven't talked. Um, so the first one is about the video in, in particular. Um, that was just a, a spur of the moment type of thing. We we watched your, uh, several people on the community and watched your video. And, you know, we tried to be very clear about this in the video, but it's it's kind of impossible. But our our discussion wasn't meant to be explicitly about kidology, but about this specific perspective that I think all of us are thinking more about. It's something that I definitely wanted to make uh, more of a focus for my own, maybe not content, but um, uh, energy 
and like my, uh, I don't know, my participation online um, in 2023, I said, you know what, I'm going to get around more and get out of explicitly just making my own content. But think about- You get dinged for retries? What? Couldn't I just reload the whole save? Oh, 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 um, there's a huge amount of words that are being said, and it feels like we're kind of retreading a lot of the same ground. And I wonder sometimes if there's a reason to talk this way, because we can just go on and on and on in a loop, and it feels like there's a lot of pain that's being communicated with a lot of words, but no actual message that needs to be said in like 500 words when it could have been said in 20, and it just feels like very lengthy and very wordy. And I just feel like we're just going on and it's just like, oh my God. About how I can, you know, provide perspectives that I think are missed from the discourse in a way that um, I may be uniquely equipped to do as a, you know, as the, the especially now that T1J has exited the left of the political sphere, um, as the only brother still, you know, doing leftist content on YouTube that I love. Um, and so as we discussed it, we realized we wanted to share this with more people because there were so many things that were in your video that merited discussion and um, unpacking um, and, you know, were, you would be useful to the community as a whole. Um, so that's why, you know, you didn't get a, uh, uh, a email or a, uh, any type of alert to have a discussion because what I don't like doing, and I haven't done much, I did a couple um, this year and I was like, yeah, I don't like this, um, is jumping on with people and like having this debate style content because there's discourse, there's a discussion that we can have privately where we can uh, meet out our ideas um, have no fear of consequences of Always how ideas ready. might be misinterpreted by a large crowd or clipped out of context or um, used to validate a perspective that we don't want to be attached to. All these different things that happen when you make content, something that I've been trying to bring up more in a lot of my other discussions. And then there's two individuals having a conversation about their ideas in a private setting where it's not content. It can't be affected by those, you know, commodified capitalistic forces. Um, so I was never having against Oh my God. Video. But I knew, like, when the video was over, that the idea of having a conversation with you was going to probably end up being like this because it's only fair. Um, and, and thus, you know, here I am. Now, in terms of like I don't, talking I think to on social media, all these other people versus you, those are people I'm in community with. You know, those are people I talk to regularly. Um, those are people who, uh, in fact, that's not gonna who do shit. There, there is enough beating of the minds, Ooh, okay. there's enough connectivity in our political ideologies that it is a, uh, a different type of conversation around conflict and disagreement. Um, and I would have those conversations in private you know, uh, via screen if necessary, um, or, you know, through the text chat. Um, because once it hits this screen, once this camera is, is on, it becomes entertainment, regardless of what we think we're doing or saying, or how we feel about what we're saying, what perspective that people might have on us, or the perspective we have of ourselves. It is entertainment. It is, I don't know if you, I think you, I saw the tweet, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, you watched the video, I talked about the culture industry, and that's what this is. And so, for me personally, I'm kind of at a point where I have the privilege of picking and choosing when I want to interact with this, with this, uh, Format with this with this framework, um, and so with you um, being a person I'm not in community with, it was just kind of like like that's just the reality of the situation. One thing I got from watching because I watched um, chunks of both of your responses is that there's a maybe a sense of I don't, I don't know what, I don't, don't want to put words in mouth, but there is a, a sense of maybe uh, hurt in that you know there was maybe a possibility for us to be in community together, and then that didn't happen. Um, and you know I don't want to I always want to be clear that that's mostly because I am really only interested in being, especially when it comes to YouTube content. Oh my God, how can you be so wordy? Like, Jesus. And being in community with other leftists, black and otherwise. And, you know, that was not a personal thing. It was just a consideration in terms of what I think is best for my presence online. Um, and, you know, not wanting to uh, compromise, you know, your, your stance position. Um, when I, if I recall, we talked about when foreign uh, reached out to you. Um, it, I, and I think you misrepresented how that conversation went. Um, and, and, you know, we can, I, I won't put foreign on the spot to clear it up, but my understanding is, you know, he asked you about your, like, where you are politically, and you didn't respond to him, is what he told us. Um, he because, didn't ask you know, me that was politically. Uh, he did, I mean, I'm happy okay. to what, what, show what you what was his response to that. Yeah. 
So what was, how did that situation uh, like happen from your perspective? Because I've, really, I've only heard before. I guess well, in the email, Foreign just uh, reached out to me. He'd uh, signed up to my Patreon and just reached out to me and said, look, we have this community on Discord of creators. Um, would you like to join? I said, yes. I joined and then when it comes to the terms and uh, all the like rules of on Discord, I'm not sure yeah. how it exactly works. It was stated that this is, you know, a leftist space, that this is for like left opinions. So it wasn't something that I knew prior to being invited into the Discord group. Uh so yes, that's what I was getting at. Okay. That sort of not having that information prior to. Um yeah. Okay. I think he assumed that you were more left leaning, um, which is what I assumed initially. Um, and so, you know, I can't speak to, you know, how they no. what, what, what the this Wait, I didn't mean to click that. Oh. Oh, you can just redo these? Oh, oh, okay. Sorry. Connect this team, foreign perspective and your perspective. But I just want to be clear that it wasn't a, it, it's, it's not personal. And that's kind of the thing that, you know, came through, I think, with the, with the video in the aftermath that, you know, in a lot of, I think, misconceptions about, you know, the, the so-called left is that, you know, we don't own the left, right? We only own the space we created. And collectively, a lot of people within the left are saying, you know, within this community, these are standards. You know what I'm saying? These are expectations for how you interact. Um, or, or, you know, how we require, what we desire to make sure people feel safe within our community. Um, people feel like they belong in the community. And, you know, we have trans people in our community. We have, um, you know. Uh, I don't, oh my God, this is gonna be agony to get through. One sec. Ooh. Hardcore leftists over across the spectrum in our community. And so it would have been uh, unfair to you, um, let alone, you know, uh, issue in the space, which is not perfect, by the way, it has conflict, uh, is a diary, um, uh, has lots of conflict, to have said, I was also, you know, gonna bring in a, a person who's apolitical, you know what I'm saying, to, to share in the space. Um, so yes, I, I just want to be clear about that, because that was something I, I felt, um, I don't say bad about, but like, I don't want there, wanted to feel like there was a, a malicious or, uh, you know, uh, a, gotcha, it, Dolores. it was just like, well, we are doing this and you are doing that. And while I remain subscribed to your channel and watch your content, like, you know, it's, it's, it's different. Yes, yes. I mean, I don't think you were malicious, but I do find it quite contradictory because I think that when it comes to at least what I see of your content and I see your content uh, just on your sphere of things, it is about making, really trying to connect with people, surely, in order for people to realize the sort of vision that you have of not just the internet, but the world at large. And I mean, if you're not willing to engage with uh, the very normal perspective or the apolitical perspective or with other people who are um, like me, willing to speak with you and engage with you, then I don't really see you getting any further along than it merely being what I see it as being as just essentially a clique. Um, oh, yeah. Which was one of my critiques of the left, that it is very cliquey. And mm -hmm. I feel that your description now of your sort of collective of creators, you're in a space, you have the same ideas, um, you know, it isn't perfect, but, you know, it wouldn't be fair to have me involved in it, sort of immediately projecting me as the other. Yeah. Especially when none of you have actually ever spoken to me um, and never actually asked me about my views and just sort of have these assumptions about my views, even this assumption, I mean, at the beginning of your video, you assumed that I was British just because of how I speak. I mean, you know, it's just these things, which I think would, this whole situation just would not have happened if we just talked. Okay. So. Yeah, take her out, dude. Don't let her think that, bro, there's a good reason to stereotype her views and treat her like a not human, okay? Let's go, FD signifier. Let's go. Time to destroy her ego. I mean, there's, there's, there's again, like varying things to engage with there. Mm -hmm. um, this is click. <laughs> uh, we are in the click. You know, I, I think we admit that as much like we're watching your video. Um, we are, we organize explicitly for specific reasons. Um, wow. And those reasons also require, uh, you know, uh, what's the word? Quality control over the space. You know what I'm saying? We put people out. Because people that I, I, you know, am still connected with and friends with, it was like, okay, for this space, you no longer really work. And people have left because they said, hey, for this space, I no, I, I no longer work. Um, you know, and that's unfortunate. But, you know, like, I, I and that's what, that one, one misconception that I think I, I pulled from your video was just like the idea that I, that I am the left, that my creator crew friends are the left. Um, we are, you know, entertainers first. You know what I'm saying? Our entertainment is built around education and idea, political ideology and about spreading ideas. Um, but we don't, like, if you wanted to come to the, what? you know, uh, rally, if you want to come to, you know, Cop City Atlanta and protest, I wouldn't disinvite you from that, because that's practice, that's, that's action. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't invite a lot of those people, you know, to my personal space. Um, in terms what of, like, a non-answer, answer the question. Um, one of my primary goals for my platform was for it to be a safe space for uh, marginalized, targeted, oppressed people. Um, and to just be, to, to, to offer you a hypothetical, 
you know, so if there was one, the, the irony of, of one of the moments, there was, there was a moment in the first response, because I've been actually trying to, I, I was in the chat, I don't know if you noticed it, it definitely came up from other sectors of, of YouTube, that I was in the chat trying to communicate with you while you were talking the first in the first one. Um, but you, you weren't paying attention to your chat, which is understandable. And the one time you caught my words, it was me saying something about Jordan Peterson. And your response in the moment was, it was exactly why I wouldn't bring you to my platform, which was it was instinctively to be in defense of Jordan Peterson, who is surely you would admit a raging transphobe at this point. And so, like, if I'm a community with trans people, if I want trans people to feel safe with my content and the space that I have created um, on YouTube, you know, uh, I would not knowingly pull someone on on the team, pull someone in the clip, pull someone on the platform, and say, "Hey, this person's ideas." Blah, blah, blah. I would have to say, "So, you know, get okay, great stuff here," which I have done. Um, I don't know if you if you see me mention you love my content. But then have why can't we just pull them on and say like, hey, this is why Jordan Peterson's views on trans people are problematic, or this is why we don't like his views on trans people. Why don't I just do that? Explosives have been used to contain them. Does that mean I need explosives for this? Wouldn't that be like the better thing to do instead of just excising potential allies? <laughs> Mooten. Mooten, if I expose you right now, <laughs> your life would be over. I have a caveat. Also, Kidology doesn't have a lot of negative to say about Jordan Peterson's trans folk. Um, I think, I don't know if you consider that a fair, you know, sure. description of your perspective of Jordan Peterson. I'm not saying that you love him. I'm not saying that you're a strong believer, but in every time I've heard you mention Should him, I expose him? Go ahead. You want me to expose Mooten right now on live TV? He already exposed himself. Oh, he messaged me to play League. I'm gonna be honest, Tristana's pretty strong right now, isn't she? You haven't mentioned that. And that is, from my perspective, problematic, you know? Um, and so when we're talking about, you know, I'm here on your platform because you get to set the standards for, you know, what comes on your platform. And you have a different perspective on what you want your platform to be. I am not, I'm not that interested in, in public discourse and debate. Um, I'm trying to develop it. I'm trying to find ways to Manifest it and utilize it going forward, but I, I want to do video essays. I want to make movies about. I want to make videos about black movies. And when I this when I like fortunate upon this type of platform, then I say, well, I want my platform to be a place where everybody or not everybody, <laughs> where people who are used to not being seen and heard in a certain way can feel seen and heard in a specific way. And to just be blunt, I, I don't think your like some of the ideas that you harbor or that you haven't engaged in um, fit that. And so that's really the main reason, you know. And I'm not saying you're transphobe, um, but I mean, you have to be a transphobe, so uh, I, I, well, I, I take that back until I take oh. that back until further notice. Um, oh, until, until, until further I'm notice. Century. But I will say that your channel is trans antagonistic. Your channel, <laughs> much like you know, uh, we, we talked about everyone having to preach. Your channel is not as bad as having to preach, right? But I imagine that some trans people, when they, I, I know because I, I talked and I heard from them, that some trans people saw that the left do better video and were like, ooh, there's there's some stuff in there that, that concerns me. And you clear a lot of it up, right? But I'm sure you can imagine why. On initial, uh, an initial reaction from a person who's more sensitive to that issue would say, oh, no, that, that was, there was some stuff, you know? Hmm. Not really. I, I did find that quite difficult to navigate because in terms of, I hadn't actually really ever heard of dog whistling as sort of a, a term before your video. And so that was very interesting to hear uh, about all the uh, alleged transphobic dog whistles and anti-black dog whistles and all of that. Um, but I think with what you were saying beforehand about uh, my apoliticism, for in instance, in relation to your content and what you do and sort of us being entertainers and creators front and center. And also what you said in your last video. Yep, yep. Oh, he's like, nah. No, no, no. He's like, nah, little bro trying to lecture me. <laughs> I'm a bounce. You know what, though? following chat. Sorry, chat. I'm so sorry. Thank you for all the super chats, by the way. I'm so sorry. Sorry um, about that. No, 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 no. No worries. No worries. No now worries. he's got a rattle. That was a debate tactic. Um, what is this? I think one thing that I just, in some of what I was saying, um, some things that I, I found quite frustrating, I think, was this idea that you just mentioned sort of about uh, being, you know, an entertainer, uh, being a creator, that sort of thing, and that um, you wouldn't then, alongside that, sort of platform somebody who is apolitical, even though Surely what you're describing as what you're doing is apolitical. And even in your uh, latest video, which is brilliant, and um, I'll link it below because I think everybody should watch it. Um, even though I don't agree with a lot of what you said in there, which is totally fine, and that's just reality. Brilliant. Oh, um, what is that blast rating? You even said that. 
you know, a lot of what we do is actually apolitical, that we don't actually do politics. So is there a reconciliation there? Because I sort of feel that it's fine for you to say these things, but for me to say these things, it's dog whistling. Uh, so I, I, I sort of feel that there's just a completely different scope of reality happening here. But we're saying the same thing, but because you have the badge of honor of being on the left and being in this particular sphere with people who agree with you and the sort of, um, I'd say, cultural capital that you most definitely do have within your sphere of things, that when you say it, it's fine. When I say it, it's sort of this problematic psychological analysis of how I'm anti-black, transphobic, etc. Um, yeah. Oh, he's doing the blurry camera tactic. He's pulling out every bad tactic in the book. If you keep A-clicking, do you actually attack faster? Somebody said that. I don't think that's true, is it? No one wants to play one game, guys. Do you think I can play just one game of League? Just one game. Yeah. Clicking directly on the target increase your attack speed by a lot. Hit. Roger that. <laughs> so, so, I'm sorry about this. Give me no a second to fix whatever <laughs> that's happened to my camera. It's totally fine. No worries at all. These things happen. I'm terrible with tech anyway, so, yeah. All the debate tactics, guys. He's a god. I'm learning so much right now. Anybody who's watching me live knows that this is not uh, some Machiavellian like thing. I generally suck at the tech I am beholden to. So it's I fine. I'm exactly the same. Um, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> so let's let's clarify some things you said. Me not platforming you was not due to you being apolitical. I explicitly said because I found some of your content trans antagonistic, Ooh. and I want my space to be trans positive. Trans um, antagonistic. Not but this is saying that I don't want to put viewers of mine that are trans or trans positive in a position where they have to grapple with and a trans with, uh, you know, antagonistic ideas or individuals or ideologies to their existence. Um, and, you know, again, it's like, imagine- I think FD Signifier, I would say is probably one of the worst of like of all the video essayists. I think he is like one of the worst. I don't mean, no, no, I don't mean like his audio. I just mean like his attitude is everything he says. He's just horrible. You know, I had a really good friend, right? And, and me and you are really good friends. And, and my really good friend, like, hates you. And, and oh, true. FD signifier is a good litmus test for where somebody's mind is at. If somebody tells you they're an FD signifier fan, they're a left writer. They're just, like, the worst type of... Like, I don't think there are, I don't think there are intelligent people that watch this guy, but... Hey, that's just me, you know? Talk shit about you all the time. Um, and, then I, and then in front of you, I talk about how great my friend is. And then say you two should meet. Like, that's, like... That's Jordan Peterson, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we cannot engage, I know you are not a huge Jordan Peterson fan, but like, your Jordan Peterson video is excellent. I use, it, it helped jumpstart ideas for me that I use in my content in the future. Your analysis is great, and I, I get credence to that. Um, a lot of the analysis, a lot of theory is great and made by interesting uh, people, thinkers, who are imperfect and within certain contexts, I would not introduce them or their, their theories um, to certain people or, or put them in certain spaces. So like, I wanna be clear of that. It's not about you, the platforming is not about you being a political. In terms of like the existence, this being a political, I don't think we disagree, but I think oh we're talking God. about two different things um, at times. So doing politics, I have one video where I'm doing politics, and that is my um, stop the you know uh, Atlanta cop city video, mm -hmm. um, of which uh, for most of its existence I've kept the ads off. Um, I took it down because there was uh, concerns for my safety here for a second. Um, I, it is not my usual content; it's, it's supposed to be size content, but because it was a, a specific cause, I put it on my main channel to give it as much reach as I thought I could. Um, that is doing politics with content, which I don't do because that doesn't that doesn't pay my bills of being children. So po being political, though, to me, and, and this is an interesting discussion I think we can have, is about where your ideology and your opinions uh, lead to. You know, what what do they what what ideas do they lend credence to? What do they support? And so in that regard, um, you know, I've never I've heard you, you know, and I've never engaged a lot with your take on being a political. Um, but if your you know content is if I were to use your content as an artifact of analysis and have to extrapolate meaning from that content and put it on a gradient scale from left to right, it would obviously be center right, you know, by, you know, a general scale, which makes you relatively left leaning in the Western world. Um, and so, like, that's a different thing than what I'm speaking to. When I have that moment where I say that the online left is apolitical, I'm alluding to the fact that they don't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you not doing and participating in politics is one thing I have to say. Does make you apolitical in that regard. But making... Videos and sharing political ideas is is 
not a political act in the sense that you're actually participating in political action, but it presents a political ideology to the world, to 130 something thousand people. Um, and so to me, that's two different things. You know, I think calling, you know, I think doing videos around political, political topics and then calling yourself apolitical is mostly just shielding from, you know, reasonable critique around what political ideas were uh, shared in your, in your content. So if we wanted to, we could just say, okay, because I just hate political, but this video was right wing. So we're going to assess the right wing or centrist ideas within this video. And that, I mean, that obviously made it unsatisfactory, but I think that's the reality of the situation. Jesus Christ. Okay, so you interpret my content as being sort of center right uh, based on your perspective. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, for the most part. For the most part. Okay. I mean, I think this is. Just to be clear, I consider Joe Biden center right and Barack Obama center right, if that. <laughs> clarify. Because I don't, you know, center right means different things to different people in different spaces. Um, so, yeah. Does the fire hurt you? Okay, yeah. I mean, uh, no. Yeah, that doesn't, uh, it doesn't change anything for me exactly. I think it, it just. Uh, I find that very hard to grapple with, especially when it comes to, I think that at least with my views and opinions, I'm a human being like everybody, my views change and are different all the time. And I'm sure yours are as well. In terms of fitting neatly into any ideology, into any politics, it's just, it's impossible for me. And that isn't just because of my perspective, but largely because of sort of the boundaries and the individuals within a group. I mean, you for instance, made it clear that in terms of me being invited to the clique that's not happening and so i found that that's been a situation and a circumstance in my life just because of my views because of the color of my skin what have you and um that's been groups of white people and groups of black people um so it's it is what it is and i've accepted that and a way that i've accepted that is by saying and identifying as apolitical and as a devout individualist not because I sort of have any vision of this being something that the rest of the world needs to subscribe to or should, or that this is the truth. It's my truth. But I think when it comes to any politics, any ideology, there is inherently and necessarily this idea that your ideology, whether it be left or right, say, is about the universal truth. It's about where we can get humanity toward this sort of end goal, this end utopia, this end vision of human existence and coexistence. Um, and so that's a truth it's meant to be sort of a truth that goes beyond you and i don't just based on my personal history and experiences have not experienced or been immersed in any kind of truth or uh storytelling that goes beyond just me and sort of my personal survival and interaction in the world so i think when that is i feel misconstrued as being center right or right wing dog whistling or uh transphobic dog whistling or what have you Especially when, like, I, I've, I've never, I, I don't know anything against trans people, for instance. I've said numerous times, I think trans women or women, you know, all of that. Um, I think that just identifies a problem and the center problem that I see with just all politics. But I think that when it comes to the left, and I said in my video, the reason why I made my video about sort of the left doing better and not the right uh, is because I see the left as having a lot more potential in so far as recognizing people, in so far as being a home for people. And currently, I don't find the left a home for the vast majority of people in this world. Um, let alone even the people who right now it tends to claim to represent. And I think that that's where inevitably in the long run, it's going to fail as a politics because people cannot change their reality, their personal histories, how they see the world, because you say so. I mean, it's like as a very simplistic example, when Bellamy said that if a trans person says that I codology, I'm transphobic, then I must accept that. That's ridiculous. And I think that that just goes so against not just human nature, but just the basic tenets of politics, which is empathy for the other and an understanding of the other without projecting yourself onto them and your vision onto them in order to come to some kind of resolution toward a political reality that will actually work. And I think that's why a lot of movements have inevitably failed in the past because they can't see that. I mean, Marxism uh, is a perfect example of that. How long do you take to beat um, Forager? That's like a two-day game, Max, I think. A disalignment there. That's a, a fun game, though. I highly recommend it. I don't think it's being resolved or is being addressed, but I think it's just being uh, sort of swept under the carpet and sort of the issues are just uh, sort of reduced to being the patriarchy or white supremacy when it's just a lot more complex and a lot more dense than any of that. Um, yeah. What am I yeah, missing? A... I'm sorry. No, I'm no, sorry. no, no, no. Go. What am I missing for research? Oh. So a, a, lot, a lot to engage it there. Um, so you're, you're talking about, on one end, uh, the general failure and incompetence of a lot, which I think we all conceded <laughs> a lot of things in that video. So yeah, this is, this is trash right here. This is some trash that's going on. Hell, if you are at all engaged with one line left and left two right now, it's a dumpster fire. Of, of monumentous proportions um, and uh, really a, a tautological proof of the, the conceit of my video uh, right now. Um, so like, there's that, which is true. What's also true 
is we have the we have the right and necessity to be focused on self-preservation first and foremost, um, especially in the face of overwhelming hostility. Um, and so for you know for Bellamy to say if a transfer is a cultural transfer, you're transfer, that doesn't mean you have to change your perspective on whether or not you're transfer. That is <laughs> that is our internal <laughs> memo to, to keep in mind. Um, that is our internal thing to consider, understand, define, meet out to each other. Um, and you know, it, it's the reason why stuff like that is said is because for trans people, the debate, like there is a debate on their existence that is ongoing, that you call a micro issue. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like uh, that is. Yeah, that I think we have a very different on. definition of micro issue. My micro issue is very much in line with what Kadisha Mbawa said in a video a few weeks ago that trans people make up a minority of the global population. Just realistically, it's a micro issue. The majority of people aren't thinking about trans people and trans rights. That's just a reality. It wasn't me putting any normative significance on that. I was just explaining very realistically why I think it is very alienating for the rest of the world to even be able to comprehend and understand transgenderism, uh, just realistically. You're explaining that the rest of the world doesn't understand trans people. And so if they're in community with us, then we better be pretty understanding and, and gracious to their experience and what they're going through. He just totally missed the point of that. Oh, God. I don't think he can engage on anything. Oh, man. Which means we need to be a little less gracious to y'all, because y'all are, are doing good without us. Y'all are doing good on your own. You know, and like, the, like why I, especially, you know, upon your explanation, right, well, I wouldn't, I, I'm going to, again, we send the label transphobe. Um, if I've said that, again, I apologize. I, I don't see you as that, you know, right now. But trans antagonistic is exactly what I would call what you did there. So like, imagine if, imagine if you were a white person, you call police brutality a micro issue because black Americans, black American men represent 5% of America's population and a fraction of the percentage of the world population. It would not change how serious that is to me as an individual. And it would come off galling to see that offered with minimal, like, you know, with minimal reflection on how that would land. And that speaks to how, you know, you, you speak very, you're very correct in that the rest of the world finds trans existence alienating. Um, which is why I'm not gonna force <laughs> trans people in my community to defend their existence if I'm gonna say you're part of my community. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and therein lies, uh, I think, you know, this hopefully came across, you know, again, I don't remember the, the video much at this point, but therein lies the fundamental criticism of uh, your, your video. And I think the perspective that not just you, because this is not a technology issue. This is on one hand a left, you know, left, because like the left is a nebulous concept, right? But this is a left issue in terms of action and communication. But this is also a moderate to liberal issue in terms of like knowledge and understanding. You know, um, there was there, there, what the video to me was what, the, what made me want to respond to the video was realizing that your perspective on the left was very typical, meaning like shared, like it's it mimics conversations I've had with so many people over the years. And I'm new to them. I'm a baby like this. I think I, I don't know if I don't know if that's understood. Like I'm, I'm I started. Ju I'm sorry. Right. So what's your perspective on J.K. Rowling's transphobia? And like, do you think she should be platformed in major newspaper publications? Yes, I do, because but I don't think, for instance, what has J.K. Rowling done? I'm just asking this just as a question, because I actually don't know. I've looked. I don't actually know what J.K. Rowling has said that is transphobic. She's never denied the existence of trans people. She's never said that trans people cannot have rights, cannot have autonomy, cannot exist. Uh oh. But she has a particular ideology, which is very much invested in the experience of Time to get triggered. feminism in its very traditional sense. This idea that biological sex matters. And I can respect that. It's fine. I don't see that as being genocidal. I don't see that as being J.K. Rowling responsible for the very precarious existence of trans people in this world today. Yes. But I think that I think that I need to hear, and which is why I'm very excited for J.K. Rowling being interviewed, an interview or podcast interview of everything that she has to say is going to come out next week. Okay. I can't actually say that J.K. Rowling is transphobic because I haven't actually heard her say in her own words, without the influence of Twitter and the internet and everybody else's perspectives, what she actually believes. So I need to wait and see. Well, okay. I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and explain. He doesn't know. He doesn't even have a couple examples. He doesn't have a single example. He actually has no fucking idea. Oh my God. He's just fucking drinking the Kool-Aid. So I made content that engages very, very likely with J.K. Rowling's transphobia. Um, and I'll just say, J.K. Rowling has been incredibly antagonistic to trans people on the basis of them being trans. She supported legislation to limit the rights of trans people. Um, and she's been outright insulting to trans people in numerous ways. And I, I'm, I'm gonna just like name that one. as just what? an effort to provide a perspective as to why one might see J.K. Rowling as transphobic. But you haven't provided a perspective. You, 
like, have you watched Contrapoint's video about J.D. Rogan's transphobia? Have you watched, again, Philosophy's video about these things? Not as um, of recently, like, when they came out, yes, but not recently, no. So, so I would, I would say, <laughs> <laughs> I would say if we can't, if we can't call J.K. Rowling transphobic, who is transphobic? You know, and, and, and that's what- Just real quick, from an academic background, okay? because I did do some high school. When you watch material, and you need to talk to somebody else about the material you watch. If you're citing the material, you have failed to understand the material and you need to go back and watch it. If somebody were to ask you, what's the main point of 1984? And your response is, well, go read 1984. You've failed to understand the material. You should be embarrassed. Don't ever do that. If somebody's like, oh, why is this or that? Oh, go watch this video, that video, and, that, and read that book. No, you're here right now talking to me. Summarize it. Give me a summary. Tell me the bullet points. You should know if you watch and you engage with it, you should know. When you have to point somebody towards a whole fucking work, it shows that you didn't understand the work that you read. I don't understand why people do that. It's so embarrass embarrassing. This is, the problem, no, this is the problem that I do have, because I think far too many people are being branded as transphobic for just their views on things, which in no way align to this idea of being fearful of trans people or not believing in the existence, the autonomy, the right to self-identification of trans people. I mean, transgender people are, are, have been with us throughout history. It's, it's, I, I don't deny that at all. Um, it's very, should, should, it's very divisive and very- Should children be allowed to transition? Should children be allowed to transition? To medically transition? To and medically transition. Do you understand medically transition? Yes, yes, yes. To medically transition. Do you disagree with J.K. Rowling? Should, um, should adults be- Wait, no, no, sorry, I haven't answered the question yet. So should children be okay, able to medically good. transition? Um, I think in the current climate and with current lack of knowledge, especially medical knowledge about uh, consensual medical knowledge, I don't think so, no. I think that once you're an adult, you can do whatever you want, but I think as a child, not medically, no. But of course, I think there are extenuating circumstances. I don't think it's a universal thing. Medical professionals, I have to leave it up to them because I, like you, to be perfectly honest, and everybody else with very emotive opinions about this, don't actually know everything, especially not about individual cases, which are very much between medical professionals, the individual themselves, and their families, and what is going on between them. Uh, I don't think this is a political thing. It's a very individual and personal thing. Um, and I don't think that is my opinion on it should implicate that uh, or should come before that. Um, ideology should not precede the individual at all. And I think the individual, whether trans or otherwise, is paramount. So it, is re it isn't really for me to say at all. Um, and that's really all I have to I say. I don't like this her thing really, about like the individual, uh, the individual, yeah. the individual or whatever. I don't really think it makes much, much sense. Does um, he have, can he engage with that? I am not interested in debating the nature of transphobia and the rights and uh, needs of trans people um, and, um, and, uh, for content. I'm just not. You, he can't do it. This guy is actually one of the dumbest people on the internet. He's actually so stupid. Here you have somebody that's like, compare, compare my answer and my engagement with her about um, transitioning minors yesterday to his answer here. Personally, I think that trying to sort out gender identity and stuff as a minor is gonna be very, very, very difficult because there's a lot of other issues that can probably come up where you might think you have these issues relating to gender identity. And starting like medical transition or puberty blockers is a pretty, feels pretty scary for somebody who's like 14 or 15. And to endorse that medically feels pretty scary, especially when there are probably some social components that are involved in this. I would agree with that. Um, I guess the issue that I run into is that like, I think that trans people are most likely a real thing. It seems to be, that's where I'm at right now. Um, and I know that for trans women especially, transitioning post puberty is very, 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 very difficult. Almost impossible depending on the type of puberty you have. So I guess mm -hmm. my thought process is, is that like, if there is a way to accurately identify somebody legitimately experiencing gender dysphoria as a minor, giving them the opportunity to kind of put a hold on that puberty until you either figure out what their issue is, they were just depressed, they just had social problems, um, or you figure out, okay, well, this person is actually trans, and then preventing that like disastrous uh, puberty from happening to, uh, in, especially for trans women, like going through male puberty if, you're, uh, if you feel like you're a woman. Um, that's kind of why I lean in favor, I guess, of the puberty blockers at least being an option for minors. Um, if you have compassion for that group of people, I don't know how, yeah, I guess I have a difficult time saying like, sorry, there's no medical treatment whatsoever available for you. You just kind of have to eat shit. That's like my issue, I guess, in that for the, for the minor thing, why I feel like it has to be available to them. I don't know if you have a feeling on that.
Like, uh, it's not my job to educate you. I'm not here to do this for content. This is literally what your job is. That's what you're supposed to do. You're here arguing about this shit on the internet. If you have somebody right here that's willing to engage you in the concept and, and you have the opportunity to, to educate them or to talk to them or to, to sway their opinion at all, why would you not take advantage of that? You literally asked her the question. You asked her, do you think, like, were you just looking for one answer? Like, what is the dialogue to there? Do you think trans youth should be able to transition? Yes, cool, we agree. No, oh, well, not my job to educate you. Like, why even ask the fucking question? God, this guy is so stupid. Fuck, I hate this guy. Ah. Um, so I don't want to move too far forward. I'll just say the thing I hope, I think I want you to understand okay. is that the reason why people okay. are going to now label people transphobe is because you're speaking. And look at what he did. Look at how gross. Like he, he was a literal gotcha. Like he's literally just, oh, now you're going to be labeled a transphobe. He's literally doing what she, like the outset of what she kind of was worried about the left doing. Right now he's doing it fucking live in 4K. What a fucking loser, dude. What a, what a weaselly little fucking loser. God, I hate this guy. He's so, he's disgusting. He, Ugh. To opinions that are explicitly harmful to trans people. Um, you, I'm not, you, you, I'm not like, a I understand it. I understand it. He's um, laughing. <laughs> you are transphobic. So, like, when you say that Get canceled. the doctors, the doctors are very clear. The, doctors are, the doctors are not clear. The doctors are not clear. Everything in the trans stuff is very, very, very new, very cutting edge. There is no clear answer here. That's why some countries are still reforming their guidelines on this. It's not true that the answer is clear. They're clear, at least in, 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 in the U.S. No, they're not. For a while. You, you, you very... It's very good that you point out trans people have been with us since the end of history. Doctors have been pretty abreast of trans issues and trans needs for gener generations. It's only recently in which trans people have gained greater visibility that all of these things are coming into question. And the fact that there is that there is even a debate, like me not, and I want to be clear, me not debating you on this and, and left not wanting to debate things isn't an issue of arguments and ideas. It's fucking respect and it's like, being the type of like i would be and i have been very annoyed to watch two white people debate racism oh my god he's at it's i i'm glad i'm glad that people like him exist so at least you can see that like black people are just as cucked sometimes as white people are on like right like they, like he's doing the equivalent of like the white guys that like get on their hands and knees and kiss the boots of like black panther people like begging for fucking forgiveness or whatever at least we can see that black people can be cringe too i am i am grateful for fd signifier for that the cringe is an equal opportunity it transcends race oh my god just like people debating black issues white people debating black issues i don't want to debate trans issues why did you ask the question i'm just so fucking irritated that he asked the fucking question that's like what is that's what's pissing me off so much like if you didn't want to talk about the thing at all that's fine why the fuck did you ask her now people are going to see you as transphobic like good one chief especially if one of those persons is in community with black people that they can platform to have that conversation um so so i want to be clear like the, the reason why i don't want to go further is a matter of Respect. not wanting to participate in the debate of the existence of humanity of people i call peers and friends yeah, I'm not debating that at all, but I think that in this day and age, you have to acknowledge that more children than ever before are identified as non-binary, are having existential crises surrounding gender. Gender is all the rage, okay? The number of people who are detransitioning because of this is just evidence of the fact. And that isn't dog whistling, that's just reality. And we need to talk about these things. We're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to get anywhere politically and insofar as people understanding trans people, actual trans people, if it's just, I'm not going to talk about this because I'll be called a transphobe, I'm a community so cancelled, etc. No, 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 it's, it's not about worrying about it's not about worrying about accountability to my community it's being accountable to my community so i'll put you in contact with some trans people that may, can that make and have this conversation with you i would i would advise privately but if you desire publicly um or you could just i love the little implicit f threats <laughs> i'd suggest doing this privately because you're gonna get slammed on this <laughs> i'd never have this combo publicly if i like it's actually the most like shame f tactics in the world it's so fucking gross You can just do the research on the other side of this issue um, a, a little better than you have up until this point. Um, and that might also help. Uh, okay, well, just because I've reached a different conclusion to you, it doesn't mean I haven't done my research. Okay. I just have different okay. opinions. It's not that I haven't done my okay. research. I just don't see the world from your perspective, and that's fine. That doesn't make me a transphobe. It makes me a human being, like everybody else. It also, but it also has consequences. And it has, <laughs> you know, not consequences like I am some authority. Like I didn't call YouTube and, and have them attack your channel, right? But consequences in that, the, the, the public perception, and the opinions about Con dude this guy is an actual f terrorist 
Like, he's a discourse terrorist. The way that he talks, there's going to be consequences for you not to... Like, he's actually the stereotype that conservatives talk about, how, like, progressives want to, like, threaten you with cancellation or some shit if you don't toe the line 100%. Jesus Christ. There's going to be consequences for the way that you're acting. The ideas you are sharing willfully, um, publicly, is going to, especially, you know, <laughs> like this is why I wanted to have this conversation with you private, <laughs> so that, you know, we can <laughs> have a conversation without the inevitable um, <laughs> backlash that will come, um, you know, based on some of the ideas that you, you, you share. And yes, yeah, so I'll put you, I'll put you in contact with some, with some trans folks that I'm in the community with and see if they want to, to, to you know, have, have this conversation with you. Um, it's, it's not a matter of being afraid of being canceled. It's a matter of, I don't know what it feels like to be trans. This is not my area of expertise. And I am just not feeling the idea of me being the person that explains it to you. Because I may miss a lot. Um, if we could, I, I, I want to talk about maybe the, 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 there was one thing that I thought was, that I, I, I like talking about a lot, um, that you touched on, or, or sorry, I was waiting for the noise. Um, in terms of like what, what the, the left is, um, I didn't read your addendum. Um, so I'm interested to see what you, you know, if you could share that, uh, cause I think that's maybe the most valuable thing to get into. Cringe fucking loser. Okay. So what's your question? Sorry. What, what do you think the left is? And, I, and I'm not saying this as like a test cause I don't have an answer either, but it'd be interesting to discuss it. Yes, I mean, I didn't have a clear definition. I had particular sort of very generic things that the left typically stands for in so far as um, very much looking at the left as including, I would include liberals, uh, even though I think um, not neoliberals, but sort of the more liberal leaning left as well. Primarily the idea of the states having a primary role in uh, advancing the prospects of people, um, the lives of people, the idea of um, progress, particularly progress of ideas um, and a disdain for uh, privatization, um, sort of the private interests of uh, the state, minimal state, etc. Uh, very generic things that sort of just underlie, um, not necessarily just being sort of extreme left, like socialist, uh, communist, but also the center left, uh, which tends to align with a lot of those ideas. So I think there's a lot of agreement there. Um, excuse me, sorry. Uh, so like, I tend to not look at center left as the left. left leaning, um, at least in the Western uh, world, because yeah, you know, uh, they're already right leaning anyway. Window, yeah, um, kind of shows that we've moved so far right. At least in the, in the U.S. In the U.K., there's different things, um, but if we move so far right, there's so many. Ways. Is there really different things in the U.K. or does just every American say that constantly? Like, <clears throat> haven't hasn't the NHS and hasn't education been under attack? by the fucking Tories in the UK for like three fucking decades. Like, I like how people think like, oh yeah, in the UK you've got Labour and Tories and both of them are socialists. Like, it's like, what, what do you mean? Like, <clears throat> it's that, you know, uh, there, there's been actual analyses of like Barack Obama's presidency to show that he's more, he was, he was basically Ronald Reagan, like. To be fair, Europe in general is more left than the USA, no? I don't think it fits that neatly. I don't know if I would say that Europe in general is more left. If you want to say like with respect to labor rights, then I would say Europe is more left. But in terms of like, uh, in terms of like sentiments on, I would say like immigration and diversity and social issues, I would say that America is vastly more left than the majority of Europe, um, depending on the types of social issues we're, ta we're talking about. Like, I think it's hard to just put everybody along one spectrum and say left versus right. Like, there's definitely things that a lot of Europe is more left than America on and, and things in America is more left. I, I think it just depends. Like his policy activity no. lined up much more with Ronald Reagan than like, uh, I don't know, Jimmy Carter, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so uh, that was one of the things that like, I took issue with, um, because you kind of mentioned that the left abandoned the working white class. And it's more like they just couldn't get it to work and they're being, you know, killed in, uh, you know, counterintelligence programs or, you know, rallying against them. But also like a lot of other issues. Uh, and so like the thing that, you know, is important to, to mention is that like Bill Clinton, the last great Democratic president in the US before Obama, um, took the Democratic Party very, it's over. Oh. He's Hello. gone. He's gone. He got canceled. Oh, oh my god, nice sniper shot. Uh, I'm not sure what has happened. Uh, He's gonzo garbanzo. Uh, oh, yes. Hello? Hello.
my back. Another debate uh, tactic successfully right? employed. Yeah, yeah I, uh, that is a um a signature move of me oh, unlocking because the battery runs out on my camera because right. I don't have I have a uh, the first expensive camera I got does not have a uh, 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 a battery oh, like a dummy battery extended. yes yeah it's not on the market because it's expensive ass camera oh, so oh it, they don't have they don't have one for your camera not for this nobody get the Nikon Z50 whatever okay. it is it's a stupid camera for stupid people um, oh, okay. shine. Is there really no dummy battery for this? USB Type C power adapter for Nikon Z50. There is a dummy battery for this. He's fucking lying. He's a fucking liar. He's a liar. Oh my God. Okay. Should we buy it and send it to him? <laughs> Please, please uh, go and watch FD's latest video in order to contribute to a fund for uh, a camera that can get a dummy uh, battery. Uh, yeah, it's, that's... It's, it's, it's on the way, hopefully. Um, oh, it is on the way. You can get uh, one. Absolutely. You lie. So, so the point I'm trying to get at He's is, a liar. The, the popular idea of what the left is should start like Bernie Sanders, right? Like at a okay. minimum. Bernie Sanders gets so much flack and heat. Bernie Sanders is the minimum for the left? Okay, bro. In the, the, the real left, which is, you know, I don't, I don't abide by taking that, that you know term too seriously but that, and that's something people don't understand is that i keep on getting called a liberal democrat by people who Melly Mel. don't know either they don't understand that what bernie's asking for is a, is a decent distance in like the political beliefs i'm developing personally and the political beliefs of most i'm in mean, community with you know uh yeah it's quite it's, socially democratic but still very much in line with uh, an appreciation of capitalist society uh i would say quite different from you um uh, most definitely yeah and that's that's kind of a thing that uh that people just don't get they don't get that they, the people don't understand capitalism. Like, like I said earlier, people don't understand how deeply entrenched and normalized certain ideologies are. Mm. Um, and so thus they don't understand and struggle to critique capitalism effectively. They don't understand that what is presented in the media as the left is still right. Um, and, they, and they don't understand. And so we are speaking hieroglyphics to them. We're speaking a whole different language to them, mm. which is why, you know, I get flat forward and he definitely didn't do me any favors by kind of starting off a power keg of, of drama uh, this week. But like, I, I really like Hassan because Hassan breaks down these big leftist ideals to a, a wide you know, <laughs> of course he audience. does um why is that not so surprising makes, to me and that's kind of what i think i need to be doing more um uh, that's that's like a goal i'm trying to undertake it's like okay how do i shorten my videos a little bit which I, i'm not doing a good job um and you know do stuff that engages better with a popular audience and still hit certain nuggets you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah okay yes yes okay right Yeah, you see, I, I do agree with you. I think I, I do see uh, sort of very much this uh, capitalist realism as being a real thing, this idea that sort of it's, it's quite unimaginable to see um, another world beyond capitalism um, or anything, any alternative to capitalism. Um, and I would say that I'm, I'm not a capitalist realist in so far as thinking that capitalism is something that um, we can't do without. But I, am. I do think that the majority of the world is in that framework or at least moving toward trying to become richer and seeing capitalism as the viable way. And in terms of saying, well, actually, no, um, that's not going to go anywhere. And ultimately, I think that the rest of the world is just becoming a lot more capitalistic and that we need to engage with that and try to understand why that is happening. Um, I don't think sort of seeing, sorry. No, go ahead, I want you to finish your yeah, I don't. I don't necessarily see socialism or perhaps the uh, extreme left as being a viable uh, alternative, a viable alternative that is attractive True. to the rest of the world, especially beyond um, America. Yeah, so, I mean, I, uh, I disagree because I think the state of the world right now is, is evidentiary of the failures of capitalism. Oh, yeah? And, 
you know, the richest we've ever been, the safest we've ever been, the least at war we've ever been. That was another thing you, you mentioned about like, I think you mentioned it, or at least it's a point that I engage with around your video, like at the same time, possibly. Um, but like, like here in the States, I don't speak effectively for the States. Mm -hmm. um, like millennials and Gen Z are not getting more conservative because they don't pass a traditional, that is like a, a data point that has been tracked for a couple of generations in America. That people when they're younger, they have all these, you know, left-leaning idealistic things. Um, and then as they get older and they get to participate effectively in capitalism, they, they leave those ideals behind for the sake of security and prosperity. Um, capitalism no longer provides security or prosperity for most people. I feel like I've heard you say, like, you don't know if you're ever going to be able to save up to get a house. And that's, that's a lot of people. Like, I'm, I'm probably the last section of millennials that comfortably bought a house, you know, because, and I only got my house <laughs> because it was a recession and Obama was giving out, you know, um, loan stipends or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, no, now, now, it's over. These two generations that are looking at a completely different economic world than their parents. Um, or they might have the same parents because like it's just, it's just oh. my, my, my parents are boomers but like a younger millennial's parents might be Xers or boomers and Z's parents are Xers uh, but I still have to say and that's just in America like from an economic uh, perspective we talk about the entire right, not we talk about social unrest mm -hmm. um, capitalism is, is it imploding it is not working which is why it's important to um, master introducing leftist perspectives to, to the people because this is the first time in a generation that we have the youths and the people's attention um you know, people have not, the left has not, the left was destroyed between the 60s and 80s um, in, in, the, in the West, and especially in America. No. It's, it's what's in the UK. Um, and so, that, you describe that as the abandonment of, of the white working class, but it was really just the dismantlement of the whole project as a whole, um, on multiple levels and fronts. And so, uh, Bernie Sanders is probably the first impetus of the left entering into popular public discourse and not being seen as this caricature of like, hippie saying, hey man, and smoking weed, like, no, people are understanding that there were leftist movements through, you know, the 20th and 21st century, but 20th century? Through the 20th century and mid 20th century that were very scary to the status quo and very serious um, until essentially the Cold War. And so, like, yeah, there, there will, capitalism doesn't have the answers anymore. You know, it has the answers to, like, people who have access to capital and access to material goods and, and resources to um, utilize it effectively. You know, so I was able to buy a house. My little sister, who's 28, Made them up house. You know what I'm saying? Whole different perspective. Some of my cousins in Chicago, you know, they're not, they're not feeling capitalism the same I'm feeling capitalism. You know, so that's who I need to be talking to about socialism, you know, anarchism, whatever. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that is interesting. Uh, I think that this does speak to sort of an issue that I do have with uh, the perspective of sort of the generic left. I think capitalism is a good example of this because it seems that blame for problems is placed on this sort of institutional monolith on this ideology without a real appreciation that it's sort of the people within that ideology who are responsible for its success or lack thereof. And I think that's the case with socialism uh, and the history of why socialism, especially in uh, Europe, especially Eastern Europe during the Cold War, why that failed. It no. wasn't because of the ideas necessarily, it's because of how they were executed by people with vested interests, by human beings. And I think it's the exact same thing with neoliberalism um, within capitalism. I think it is purely a fact of people and what people do and people who then accumulate power and execute it in a way that benefits them. I don't think that this has to do um, as much, at least globally, with um, race in the way that is uh, sort of at least presented a lot on the left as it sort of being a white supremacist issue. I think South Africa is a brilliant example of um, this, of how um, it doesn't matter if you have a white elite in charge or a black elite in charge, um, people are going to be people. And I think, I think all ideologies have this problem, which is why I, one reason why I'm very individualistic because I think that it is an opportunity to actually um, figure out why people act the way they do uh, within ideolo ideologies or ideological frameworks and why capitalism doesn't work. I don't think it's just because X, Y, and Z mechanisms and formulas of capitalism or of socialism. It's because people use it to their own ends in particular ways within their particular histories and circumstances. And I feel that there is an inherent failing um, with not just the left, the right as well, but um, specifically just as we're talking about the left, I think there is that failing in recognizing um, the humanity, which is really paramount to all of this, to capitalism, its success or otherwise, to socialism, um, anarchism, its success or otherwise. Um, I don't think we're going to, the world isn't going to be a better world if we become a socialist world. Um, hmm. Because you're still going to have the exact same people. I also notice I feel like they're saying nothing. Um, it's just the FD signifier guy is very wordy. Um... 
or functioning within um, socialist systems. And uh, I think there is just a, a gap there, if that makes sense. Well, Andrew was going to say we would have a better world in the anarchist world. Every day I wonder how much more I'm starting to agree with him as I learned that. Um, but that is not to uh, reject some of the things you're, you're speaking to here. Uh, one of the annoying things that is that, like, I don't, I, I don't think Kidology's worldview is very good here. Like, the, and focusing on the individual, the, it's like the opposite of Britney's, like, focusing on, like, or no, it's the same thing as the individual, the individual. Like, we have to be able to talk systemically or structurally at some point. But but he, like, he, he like can't respond to anything she's saying. Um, he just, he has no response. It's just like, he's just, like, rambling now. Are the core ingredients of any political system. Now, I would argue that capitalism, uh, this design um, at its core, even in the many permutations of it, tends to incentivize people to act in selfish ways and ways that disregard others. But it's, you know, obvious that, you know, many a socialist regime has started off with the bank and failed under, you know, uh, poor leadership, um, bad decision-making, so incompetence, Brendan, um, et cetera. Sure. Now, the, the thing you are leaving out that I, I want to be, like, we, we have to enter into the discourse is how um, this is not, that's, that's, you know, that is encouraged by outside forces. You know, the, in the, the 1960s, and the CIA was uh, engaging in, you know, international assassinations of democratically elected officials who were more, and also this like obsession with talking about World War II and South America in the 60s. Like, bro, time has moved on. Like, we have to be able to talk about the world as it exists today and foreign policy as it exists today. Not like, don't like scream like Monroe Doctrine a million times and then talk about fucking Venezuela and Chile and fucking all, and like, oh, South America, South America, CIA, South America, CIA, South America, CIA, CIA. South, like, bro, the Cold War is over. Like, the wall fell in like 91, okay? We're, we're past that. We live in a different era now, okay? We live in a different era. We live in a different age. We have different foreign policy now. Like, talk about what exists today. You know, left yeah. inclined. Right? So, like, we can't act like that is not part of the, the project. You know? that's, that's including um, internally. You know, they were assassinating leftist people within America. Um, you know, but I think that the takeaway, the thing to consider is... Uh, okay, I don't care, man.